Would you like to find anything in your QuickBooks Online account easily? Here's my Uncle Mark to tell you all about it. That's right. I'm going to show you exactly how to use the new QuickBooks Online Advanced Search Tool. You'll be able to find your transactions, track your transactions, and fix your transactions. And I'm going to give you the best possible examples of each right here in this video. So first, we start with the basic search tool. And you can access the basic search tool by clicking right up here in the top right corner of your QuickBooks Online interface right on the magnifying glass. Once you click on it, you can see that it opens with two sections. The top section here shows a list of the recent things that you searched for and the bottom section shows a list of recently entered transactions. And the reason they do that is because 90% of the searches that people go to when they click the magnifying glass are going to be for either the most recently entered transactions that they wish to call up and correct or things that they recently searched on that they're searching on again. That means that most of the time, you'll get what you're searching for instantly. Now, there are five different things that you could type into the text field of the search tool to get search results. You could search by the name of the person in the transaction, the date of the transaction, the amount, or the reference number, and you can even search by the text in a text field, like the memo field, the description field, or the customer message. As long as that transaction has exactly the text that you type in to the search tool, that transaction will show up in the search results and you'll be able to open it and fix it. So now, let's find all of Alan's transactions. He's our best customer. We click the magnifying glass and all we have to do is type A, L, A, N, and notice you get only transactions where Alan is the name. If you look closely, you can see at the bottom of the list there's a View More button that you can double click and get all of the transactions in the search results. And if it's too many, you can just scroll up and down. But what if you only remember the bill number and you don't even remember the person's name? No problem. Let's type in the number 8472 because even if there's more than one bill number with uh, 8472, how many possible transactions could have the results 8472? Well, no problem. We click the magnifying glass, the cursor is already here, and we type 8472. Now, you probably only have this one in your search results. I have two because I moved ahead in the course. You see, this video is actually the second video in the series of courses to make everyone an expert in QuickBooks Online. So this is the one that was entered when you did QuickBooks Online Complete Tutorial. The other one for Con Edison is there because I moved ahead to the advanced course. But the point is, it's never going to be a large number of uh, transactions that have the exact same bill number. So if you just enter the bill number that you remember, it should be pretty easy to find the one you're looking for. So now let's search for the ones that we have with Alan, but specifically in the amount of $3,000. Well, what does this mean? This is an example of using an additional filter. You see, when you first click on the magnifying glass, you have access to all of the transactions in your QuickBooks Online account. So picture all of your transactions like a big pot of food. And picture the word Allen as like a colander strainer that acts like a filter. And when you pour the big pot of food through the strainer, 
only transactions with the word Allen will fall through. Now at the bottom, you have only Allen's transactions. But the story gets better. If you then take Allen's transactions and pour them through another filter, and this time the filter is $3,000, what will fall through are only Allen's transactions that are for $3,000. Click the magnifying glass, and in the basic search tool, just leave a space between the two pieces of data. So we type A-L-A-N, and we get Allen, then hit the space bar and type in 3000. We don't even have to hit enter. QuickBooks Online will automatically give us every transaction that has both Allen and 3000. And you can see there's a variety of them because, again, I moved ahead to the advanced course from the basic tutorial. But if you take the basic tutorial, you'll at least have some of these search results, and you can double click and then open them up along with me to be able to edit, excuse me, yep, edit any of Allen's transactions. And if you think that was great, wait till you see the Advanced Search Tool. The Advanced Search Tool allows you to search by the same criteria that you used when you searched in the Basic Search Tool, plus three additional filters. You can also search by the account that the transactions were recorded in. You can search by the transaction type or if the transaction included a product or service, you can search by that as well. And you can access the advanced tool by opening the basic tool and clicking right at the bottom in the small blue text where it says advanced search. So we click on the magnifying glass, we go to the bottom where it says advanced search, and now we're in the advanced search window. You can even collapse the left panel so you have more room. You can do that by clicking these three lines with the arrow pointing that way, and now you expanded it to see more. Now what you're looking at is every single transaction that was ever recorded in your QuickBooks Online account. And if it's too much for one page, they will provide as many pages as necessary for you to click on to be able to see all the transactions that were ever entered. But of course, it wouldn't be practical to look through them that way. You should use the filters that they provide on top. Notice right away, they have laid out across the top five or six of the eight or nine filters that you can use when you're searching and you can just choose any one of these, two of these, or three of these, and then automatically the transactions will be filtered in front of you. But what about this, this magnifying glass here? Well, if you click on that, you can type in any text that's in any transaction, like anything in the memo field, description field, or customer message. So that would be the place to search for any text, and the other filters would be the place to search for all the other things that you can search on to really narrow down what you're looking for. So our first example when using the advanced tool will apply two filters. Let's find all of the payments that we received specifically from customer Allen. Well, that's very simple. We click the pull down arrow by contact and choose the name Alan, and now we have all of his transactions. Then we click the pull down for transaction type, and we could go all the way down to the letter P for payment, or you could type in PA and it will filter that field down to the one you're looking for. Click on it, and now we have two filters. We have payments just for Alan. And luckily, there's only a few. Now I'd like to give you a great bit of advanced advice when using the advanced search tool. In the real world, it is extremely helpful to be able to see the date created or date last modified of all of the transactions in your search result list. And in order to do that, you have to click the cogwheel. 
And a great thing about the advance tool is you can click right here on the cog wheel and open up more columns so that you can see more information about all the search results that come up when you search. And when you click on it, you will see an additional list of additional filter, uh, excuse me, additional columns that can be displayed when you look at your search results. So we can add memo and last modified, and we can see those additional pieces of information for every transaction that comes up in the search results. Then to save it, just click anywhere away from the little list and you will see these columns have been added. So remember, these three lines will collapse the left panel so you have more room to see your search results and you can click on the three lines if you need to bring back the left panel to navigate around QuickBooks Online. Let's click these lines and scroll up and down and see that we have all of the payments for Allen, but now we can see if there was anything entered in any of the memo fields and we can see the date and time that this transaction was either created or last changed. Now we're going to use the advanced tool for an example of a fast fix. And if you want to have the same numbers on your screen as I have on mine, you can click in the link in the description field below and do the full tutorial. That's the course that comes before this one. And if you do that entire course, you'll have the same numbers that I have and you'll be able to get the same results on your screen. So let's see if we can apply our new skill to making a fast fix like we would in a real situation. Try to imagine that back on March 5th, when we recorded this sale receipt, we received $2,520 cash from Allen for a service that we provided. Now, on that date, we thought it was directly deposited from Allen into the bank account. But when we looked on our bank statement at the end of the month, we did not see that $2,520 that we recorded on March 5th. So what we did was we looked around the office and we found that it was in the office and it was never deposited in the first place, even though when we recorded it, we recorded it as being directly deposited into the bank and not sitting around in the office. So what should we do in QuickBooks Online when we find out that a check that we thought was deposited on March 5th, or excuse me, was actually paid directly into the account on March 5th, is actually a check that's sitting right here. We have to edit that sale receipt and fix it. We have to change it from recording it as being deposited into the bank over to payments to deposit because it was received but never deposited. In other words, we have to find a particular transaction, open it up, and change it from one account to the other. So these are the numbers in the trial balance that you should have after finishing the most popular tutorial in the world in QuickBooks Online that's free right here on YouTube. And if this is your ending trial balance, then for our purposes, this is the trial balance before fixing the mistake. And we know that the mistake accidentally recorded something into cash and bank that should not be there. So when we correct cash and bank, it should decrease to the proper number by the amount of 2520, which is the amount of the mistake in transaction. And that money should not be in cash and bank. We should have originally recorded it into payments to deposit, which means payments to deposit needs to increase by the 2520 and become 6720 after we fix this mistake when using the advanced search tool. So remember, we're looking for a sales receipt specifically in the amount of $2,520. Well, that should be very easy, but I suggest you clear the panel not only by clicking each X to remove the filters, but take my advice. After you remove the filters, click the refresh button so you get fewer error messages and you're starting fresh. Now, I like to collapse the left panel.
and we're looking specifically for a sales receipt. So type in SA after clicking the arrow and we can go right to sale receipt. At first, we get every sale receipt in the entire file. And if we run out of room, it would show more pages. But now we're looking for a sale receipt with a specific amount. So we click in the amount field, type in the number and push tab, and then when we click the magnifying glass to search, actually you can just hit enter, we can see that there's only one sales receipt in the amount of 2520. And all we have to do is double click right on it and we can open it up and correct anything we're looking for. Remember, it was a mistake to put it in cash and bank. It actually belongs to payments to deposit. So we can click save and close and now our trial balance should be correct. And when we look at our trial balance, you can see the results are exactly as what we expected. Cash in bank became 28490 and payments to deposit became 6720 Now my favorite search tool is the classic search tool because it can do things that the other two search tools cannot. So the classic search tool filters things differently. First, you choose what type of transaction you're searching for, then once you do that, you choose which specific field of data you're going to search on. Once you decide that, then you type in the content of the field that you're searching for and only transactions that have that content in that field will show up. But first, let's go ahead and open up the classic search tool. You can do that by opening the advanced window and then clicking where it says go to classic advanced search tool. So from the top right we click the magnifying glass to open the basic tool then we go down to the bottom and click advanced. Once we're in the advanced window we can click right here go to classic advanced search. Now what exactly are we looking at? Well the type of search you do depends on the content in the field type. So first you would choose if you're searching for a numeric value or text. And if you're searching for a numeric value like you would if you were searching in the amount field, then these would be the choices greater than, less than, equal to, and so on. But if the field of the transaction you were searching on was alphanumeric, like text or numbers that are mixed with text, something like the memo field, then these would be the choices that you would have available to search. You would search for something that contains, equals, does not contain, whatever it is you type in to the little box here. So let's do an example of something that only the classic search can do. Let's search for invoices in amounts that are greater than 2,900. Again, that's something that you can only do with the classic window. So first our transaction type will be invoices and the field within invoice will be amount and it will not be equals it allows you to search for those that are greater than the amount you type in here and then when you click search you get all of the invoices notice all of these are greater than 2900 you want to see something amazing look at the invoice numbers and notice that if you switch greater than to less than it will be the complete opposite results. Search. Now all the results are less than 2,900 and these are all completely different invoices with completely different numbers.